What's that weird thing? Today we're going to talk about the ERVT block or extended range variable thickness block this is something I designed with PH tool. This is one block that covers you for ASME piping inspections on pipe over 20 inches in diameter from 0.2 to 2 inches thick. Let's take a look. <music> A little bit of a primer on ASME inspections. You have piping and non-piping. Typically non-piping is a vessel and piping is piping. So we're talking about an AOD inspection. We're shooting circ seams. So we're hitting pipe to pipe, pipe to flange, pipe to elbow. If you're going to inspect a long seam, I recommend that you use a curved block beyond 20 inches. I'll do a video on that someday. But right now we're talking about using a flat block and that is where the ERVT comes in. First, let's take a look at that ASME rule about curvature. You can see here that it clearly states that if your curvature is over 20 inches, then you can use a block of essentially the same curvature or a flat block. So if you are doing a 20 inch diameter pipe inspection, you still have to use a curved block. For piping welds, the rule is that you have to have a calibration block that is within 25% of the nominal pipe thickness, and this is where we run into problems. We always seem to be one block short. If you're doing a 6 millimeter weld, 9 millimeter, 12, 15, 19, 25, you can imagine that there's a vast array of calibration blocks that you need to have on hand, and this is why we have the extended range variable line with pH tool. Let's take a look at what's inside the box. So we have a certification report. You gotta have one of those. And here's the block. Now it is a little bit heavier than an IIW block. IIW is about 10 pounds. This is probably closer to 13 or 14 pounds. But of course it's a much different shape. We've got sort of a rectangular thing here with lots of different cuts on it. Now there are six thickness steps here. We've got uh, four on this side and then you've got one on the top like this formed with an EDM wire cut and then if you roll the block over we actually get our thickest step. So in the ERVT block we have six steps. We've got quarter inch, three eighths, half of an inch, three quarters of an inch, one inch and one and a half inch. With the block on its side like this, we can access the four thinnest sections. If we put the probe here, we can get this hole. And then if we want to move over here, we get that hole. And of course this end is cut at an angle so we don't have any termination echoes. And if to do the other ones, of course, we just flip the block over. We get to the one inch section by rotating the block 90 degrees and using it on its edge. And you can see here that we've created this 25 millimeter or one inch section by making a wire cut all the way through the block. We've got three holes down here. And again, that end is tapered to reduce end reflections. One more rotation, put it back down on its side and put the probe here. Now we're shooting through this sort of sideways through the one inch section to get to our one and a half inch. There's your three holes. And again, this edge is also tapered. Do a little demonstration to show you the effectiveness of the end cut here. I'm gonna put it on the three quarter inch step and you can see I've got a first leg, second leg and third leg hole signal, but no corner trap, even though the position of the hole is quite close to the end of the block. Now, if I rotate the probe this way, you will see the corner trap signal come back in again. There it is there, but in position to hit the hole, I see nothing. If you inspect the same sizes of pipe welds all the time, then you probably have the block you need and you don't need something like the ERVT. But if you don't know what's coming next or you're just tired of always being one block short, then something like this does make a lot of sense. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and thanks for watching.